Hello and welcome to the Ball and After. Ball and Europe's uh, magazine show, whatever you want to call it. Basically the thing where I just talk about basketball and occasionally clean my glasses because I can see in the shot that they're a little bit dirty. So we said in our comeback episode that we were going to not just do European stuff here. We'll mostly still be European focused, don't worry. And unlike the last one, most will be more single topic with maybe some footnotes at the end. And uh, this is one of the ones that is not European focused because occasionally there's an NBA thing I really like that isn't to do with the Euro and the NBA, but I just think it's fascinating. And I want to talk about it with you all, the ball in Europe viewers, listeners, whatever way you check out your YouTube. If you're on premium, you're not getting any ads, but uh, you are able to listen to me instead of watch me. Although, who wouldn't want to look at my beautiful desk, uh, which you can only kind of see in shot because of what up today. But we'll, we'll, we'll work on the shot, we'll work on the setup, like we're, we're getting there. So what am I talking about today? Uh, Carmelo Anthony is a short version who didn't expect to be talking about in video anytime ever. And the reason is pretty simple. I thought, like a lot of y'all, that, uh, well, he was done as being interesting. Not necessarily as a basketball player, but certainly as an interesting basketball player. But obviously you've seen that very different this year. Portland aren't doing great in the West, although the contest for 8th seed is still very open and they could very well make the playoffs. But one of the key things that could get them to the playoffs, of all things, is Melo. Which, uh, if anyone saw him at the end of his OKC run, and especially during his ill-fated Houston run, nobody was seeing that happening. There was talk of him going to LA to join Braun, uh, but that didn't happen. And uh, went to Portland, and most people figured, well, OK, the fit makes sense. It's a bit of a flyer. They need something here. Let's see what Melo does. But the hopes weren't exactly high, where are they now? Yeah, it's, it's worked out OK. He's gone on his best shooting performance since his Knicks days. And I don't think he only had a couple of Knicks seasons where he had better shooting stats. Uh, you know, and his uh, turnover rate is pretty low. Uh, well, it's actually higher than his OKC in Houston time, uh, but it's actually lower than all of his next seasons, which says more about his usage. But the, we're going to get to the usage, because I mean, that's the one that's interesting when it comes to what I think is the reason Melo's actually comfortable out there with Portland now. His usage is very similar to his Houston and OKC numbers, and those aren't exactly memorable parts of Carmelo Anthony's career. We think more of his time in the Nuggets, where they ought to at least retire the jersey, if not put a statue outside one day, and his time with the Knicks, where he was the guy with the ball. And uh, before I get into my reason, and there is one thing to bear in mind, the guy with the ball part. Uh, I remember back during his best point of his Knicks days, I was interviewing for my day job at the Business Post, a chap from Sportview who obviously did those great analytics checking movement and usage and all that in basketball. And one of the things they had found was that even though he didn't get many assists, Mello was one of the better at actually dropping dimes on a pure quality of assist basis and he was one of the best passers of the ball in basketball, he just wasn't really known for it. But obviously we saw in OKC he was not great, he was, you know, putting up passable numbers by Mello standards. And in Houston it was, well, an abject disaster. I mean, there's no getting around that. He was not the piece to put them over the top to get them past the Warriors, to get them to the finals, to a potential uh, another championship, first since the Hakeem Olajuwon days. And, you know, everybody figured, well, the game has passed Melo by. His type of high usage baller just isn't going to work anymore. And in that respect, we were correct. The Melo we knew wouldn't work anymore. It was, uh, you know, the low efficiency high usage, obviously. Some guys are still high usage because they're very efficient. And it was like, well, what will work then? And I think the break is basically the best thing that ever happened to Melo because he was allowed to think about himself as a basketball player. Like, this is a 17-year veteran. He's you know got a couple of Olympic gold medals. He's going to walk into the FIBA Hall of Fame. Like I think he's obviously a Naismith as well. But if you look at his FIBA stats, this guy's strolling into that like even more than any debate there may be over his place in the Naismith. Like the FIBA Hall of Fame, it's a, it's a stroll. There's no debating this, but. You know, he's a 35-year-old man, and he had been used to being the guy wherever he went. He was always the number one option, where a lot of people said he's probably best as a number two option on a team, which obviously was a challenge given the amount of times he needed the ball. Like, he was always in the like late 20s, like low 30s on percentage of usage. And, you know, it's like, well, this is a huge change for him, because you put him somewhere like Houston, where he was, where he'd like, you know, Harden and Paul... That's that's not an easy switcheroo. And again, you look at like you know where he was with the OKC situation. Again, it was like, you know, you got a couple of superstars there, and they're younger, fit, fitter, more athletic. They can do more right now. Being flunt, frankly blunt about it, Melo is never going to really be able to adjust straight from being the guy in New York to that. And the one thing he's gotten with the Portland stint is what he had before the Portland stint. 
which was time to actually think about himself as a basketball player, time to find headspace essentially, because this is a guy who does think about the game. This is a guy who, when he's playing, isn't just, you know, the glorious competitor. He is that, but he's much more. He's a more deep player, essentially. Like, he's a guy who has always looked to find what works best to make him the best version of Melo he can be. For the vast bulk of his career, going back even to his championship at Syracuse, the best version of Mello, which apart from having the kids screaming in the background, hello neighbours, as you can tell I live, I'm doing this from my apartment as usual, the best version of Mello, well, it was, you know, the guy who was the guy. And he just wasn't ready, I think, well, he didn't have time, rather, to adjust to being that alternative, like with the Team USA performances he had even, when he was going on the floor, even though he would know he wasn't necessarily the best player on the floor, he was in position because of the sheer quality of those USA teams and what they were going up against for the most part to take on that role of being the guy. So even if he was with a LeBron in his peak or something like that, it wasn't going to be an issue. Like the caliber of deferral, was a deferral option wasn't a challenge. But here he was in OKC first, where he wasn't terrible, I think it's a little overplayed about he was, but he certainly wasn't him. And then in Houston, where he just flat out tried to be him, and it was abject failure. And he'd just gone straight through, straight through, and it's like, this isn't working. And so after he stopped playing with Houston, he finally had a point in his life, and his first time in his like, you know, very, very successful uh, basketball career, he may go, oh, he's got no rings, he's got a couple of gold medals, he's successful, okay? You know, to make that Team USA roster, you've got to be a good baller. And he was a very good, he is a very good baller. He was also a very, very good baller then. He had a time to think about what Mello is, what Mello can be, what middle-aged, for want of better phrasing it, Mello is going to be. Because he's not a guy who wants to hang him up. Like, he may not be the Vince Carter type who's going to want to be, you know, the f player who plays in four de separate decades. But he's extra hard for Mello because he's still only in his second decade. <laughs> you know, actually, you know, he's just entered his third, sorry. Uh, but, like, he needed to do another... What, uh, nine years, 11 months of basketball to uh, make it to a fourth decade, and that would be 44, 45, well, he'd be, would he be 45? He'd be 45, yeah, playing in his uh, fourth decade. Don't think he's planning on being that long, but at the same time, he's like, well, right, I am not done yet. A lot of people are saying I'm done, but he's always been a guy who's been able to shut out the media influence for the most part, like, you know, for all the, you know, celebrity nature of him and his wife, especially even with the New York market. You know, people say it get to him. I always felt that he was able to take it in his stride for the most part, compared to some athletes who, on Twitter, Kevin, how are you? Yeah, uh, weren't really as suited to it. Uh, Mello was just, you know, him. Like, even the hoodie Mello thing was a, a meme he enjoyed. Uh, you know, even though he knew part of it was sort of, you know, people just having a bit of crack. And so here's a guy, you know, and he's like, well, I want to get back, but I've got to get back. I've got to get back in a way that's not going to be Houston again, and frankly, isn't going to be OKC again. So. We've got a guy putting up good numbers, but on near career lowest usage. Like, the only play seasons he's not been used this much were his seasons in OKC and Houston. And, yeah, the turnovers aren't great, but they're still a lot better than most of his Knicks years. The assists still aren't enormous, but he's never really been the dime guy. But the scoring and rebounding and the efficiency, which is, again, pretty close to his Knicks numbers. Like, we're talking about, you know, when he was the guy there, they're good. They're, they're, they're rather good in terms of the efficiency. And... That's what Portland need out of him. If they can get any more out of him, great. But right here, right now, I mean, we just want a mellow that works, a mellow that belongs in the NBA because we're so used to, you know, a player who was through the 2000s, you know, in an era where low efficiency shooters were, you know, fine. Uh, you know, it was it was an okay thing to do. And like also, of course, the free throw shooting isn't bad, which does not hurt in the slightest. Uh, really helps the efficiency long term. Yeah, I think he's just, he's, he's in the right headspace. I think Mellow's been able to mellow. It's not necessarily basketball reasons as such, but rather having time to not be a basketball player, which, you know, he's never, he, well, he has had injuries, but he's never really had an injury situation where he had time to then adjust what his role was going to be. So I think the mellowed out Mellow, who was never really that stressed, but the, the mellow, mellow with headspace is the Mellow we're seeing now. And I think that's the difference. I think Carmelo Anthony has found where he needs to be as a basketball player. Yeah, this isn't exactly the most hot takey video, but I just really wanted to talk about what I like about it, where I think there's a man who's had time to think about his game and been able to adjust and be able to find what he is, what he's going to do. 
And yeah, that's a, a rare NBA focused video here. We will have a few more, don't worry, but uh, this is one of them. And that's me talking about Carmelo Anthony. We will have very Irish content next week and some very, very European content, as in not Irish Irons, obviously, in Europe, but not Irish related European content coming up in the week ahead because it's Cup Final Week is very, very close by. At the time of recording, it is seven nights away, in fact. And yeah, that's going to be fantastic. So we'll have lots of content like that. If you're checking out the site, uh, we have our CJ Fulton interviews already up. We should have a couple more pieces coming up in the next day or two as well that are more Euroleague focused. And yeah, uh, shout out as well to that young man Zuka's kid from Greece. I saw him playing uh, against Bologna in the Basketball Tennis League last year. 49 points in the ANGT. The kid's got game. Good shout out to him. Uh, so that's our one footnote. If you want to check out any of the current content of in Europe, in the footnotes, but the one thing we do, of course, love you to do, like, share, but the most important ones, oh, comment as well, but the most important ones, subscribe and ring that bell. So subscriptions, we need to get way up, uh, where we've got a real chase on our hands to get to where we need to be entering a year league final four weekend, and uh, we really do need support, so please subscribe, please ring that bell, and please tell your friends. Until next time, see you later.